public hearing to order. Uh, this hearing is to go over the, uh, I guess the warrant for the referendum vote on November 3rd. I guess we're calling it, not really calling it a special town meeting. Um, we can read the warrant if nobody's seen it. I won't go through the explanation at the bottom, but we can read what the warrant says. Um, it's actually from Harriet Bergoon, our, uh, one of our clerks. It says the name of the state of Maine. You are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Newcastle and said county and state qualified by law to vote in town affairs to meet at the Newcastle Fire Station, Municipal Fire Station, in said town on Tuesday, the third day of November, 2020, then and therefore to act upon articles one through two, the polls for voting shall open at 8 a.m. and will close at 8 p.m. So article one is just to choose a moderator, uh, which we do at every election. And article two is the true question that shall the town of Newcastle effective January 1st, 2021 enact the core zoning code in the road driveway and entrance ordinance and repeal, repeal chapters one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, and 10 of the Newcastle land use ordinance and convert chapter, chapter six to the flood plan management ordinance, convert chapter eight to the mobile home parks ordinance, convert chapter 11 to the shoreland zoning ordinance Convert chapter 12, section A to the erosion and sediment control ordinance. Convert chapter 12, section B to the stormwater management ordinance. Convert chapter 13, section I to the archeological site ordinance. Convert chapter 13, section O to the tower ordinance. Repeals chapter 13, sections A through H, sections J through N and sections P. And convert chapter 14, section K to the seasonal conversation, uh, seasonal conversion ordinance and repeal chapter 14 sections A through J and section L. Um, I guess without reading the explanation on here, I guess we should read it as part of the article, right? All right, so the explanation the question is presented in two paragraphs. The paragraph bundled together 11 distinct actions for a single vote. The first paragraph enacts the core zoning code and the road driveway and entrance ordinance. These two new documents replace the zoning portion of the existing land use ordinance and will take effect on January 1st, 2021. The second paragraph both repeals a Newcastle land use ordinance and converts eight code modules into separate standalone ordinances. These code modules are currently embedded in the pages of the existing land use ordinance there are no revisions to the language in these eight documents. They simply carry over and remain effective on January 1st, 2021. And simply put, a yes vote is to vote in favor of the new core zoning code and a no vote is to vote against. It. Instead of being reversed like normal referendum questions are, this one's pretty straightforward. A yes is a yes, you want it. A no is a no, you don't want to move forward. Anybody else have anything to add to reading the uh, referendum? All right, we did get a couple of uh, letters from residents. One from, one from uh, Seth Stewart over on Glidden Street and one from Nicholas Barr. I'm not sure he lives South Newcastle, right? Yeah, Lynch Road. Don, you're going to bring those up? <coughs> there it is. There's the first one. I'm not going to read these. Um, I don't know if anybody, any members of the, either board wants to comment on any of these, any items in Mr. Stewart's letter, or at least maybe run over some of his bullet points. I can't tell if anybody's wanting to say anything now. I mean, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I can take a crack at it. I think, um, in short, 
um, the core zoning code um, has, you know, a, an executive summary of what what we're doing is that, um, you know, we, as, as we said before, six years ago, a meeting of all the committees and boards in town decided that the, the current land use ordinance was uh, needed to go, needed to be replaced, and we wanted it to, to do it in a new way. Um, coming out of that meeting, uh, we hired consultants, created a, uh, the, a committee, um, developed a new comprehensive plan. Um, that comprehensive plan was developed in the largest planning effort in the history of Newcastle, uh, in, involved uh, many meetings of, of many people, um, you know, different breakout groups, um, identifying parts of town that, that we wanted to protect, that we thought should have more development. Um, that resulted in the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan was approved by the voters by a, a large majority. Then um, a, the uh, character code was developed based on that, went to the voters, was, was not approved. Um, the selectmen after uh, thought created a new committee, gave that new committee a charge to um, make changes in the character code. Um, take, you know, there, there, there were a list of, 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 of things that they wanted to see changed. That committee made those changes, simplified things, um, took all the, the um, design requirements out of the rural area um, and ended up with the core zoning code. That core zoning code was completed um, this winter, this past winter, and uh, the, the uh, selectmen had scheduled the first meetings, the first hearings to present that and COVID hit. Um, things sat for months. And then um, starting a couple months ago, we brought it back um, and that's what we're, that's what we're, the, the, the core zoning code that we're talking about now is a result of that, that whole history. Um, so I think that, that, you know, that's really what we're doing, how we got here. Um, the, the, I'll just look at like the rest of the bullets here from my perspective, the, the um, chapters being repealed are those parts of the land use ordinance that are being replaced by the core zoning code. So the, as, as the explanation in the um, warrant article says, um, there are many modules for things like shoreland um, that are really standalone and, and will serve the town better as standalone ordinances. Uh, the, the remaining pieces are the zoning code pieces, and those are being replaced with the new um, core zoning code. So that's what. So we're not we're not losing anything. We're but that's what that that's what causes the language to be so complex. Um, a cost benefit. We're not really re we're repealing them in the existing ordinance, but they've all been written as the new. Or zoning code. The, the the functionality, yes, right. The functionality is in the new ordinance, um, so we're not losing functionality um, in in that sense. Um, uh, cost benefit analysis is, in my opinion, would be hard to nail down. Um, you know, as far as a dollar value, in my opinion, new code would allow us to expand Newcastle more, allow more businesses in to pretty much the entire area of the town. Um, but the, I think some of the benefits that we're gonna gain are, are little things. I know there's uh, coming to the planning board, there's uh, there's a cell tower that wants to go in, in downtown that would nobody even notice, but in today's ordinance, it's not allowed um, at all. There's no exceptions for the rules to it, but this code the new code would allow that and you know and that's a benefit 
I don't know if you want to put a dollar value to it, but that's a benefit to all residents in the downtown area that, you know, now we're going to have a better cell coverage. And I know parts of downtown is hard on cell coverage. So just our town office alone is horrible cell coverage. So, you know, that, that's a that's a true benefit. You can put a dollar amount on that. You know, the rest of it, allowing in-law apartments now um, to be huge savings to to local families, allowing their parents now to live on their property with them versus having to be put in a home somewhere. I, I look at those costs, you know, and that's the benefit. So I think a lot of us go to this, in my opinion. Yeah, and the next line outline of what revisions or fixes are all being contemplated. Um, we're working on a list, but I don't think we have anything solid in writing yet. We need to see if this passes first and then take it on from there because whatever we come up with today that we think might need to change could be different once this is enacted and we run our first through um, permits through. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I think the, the, the one thing that, that we've talked about multiple times is that um, a, a, an additional piece of this process is going to have an historic preservation ordinance. Um, and, and I think that, that we've been thinking that that's going to require a, a, a standalone committee to evaluate what, what the town needs and then propose a ordinance language. And, and some of that ordinance language can slot very easily into the structure of the core zoning code. That's part one of the benefits of the, of the core zoning code is the structure that is gonna allow for um, additions for, of things like historic preservation. But that's, that's, that's one we've been talking about for quite a while that we recognize is, a, is something that once this passes, we can create a new committee to work on. And oh, go ahead, Tor. I think just on the, I'm going to skip forward a little bit on, on the uh, questions that uh, Mr. Stewart had presented. But the last one was about the design review. And I'll speak to that. Having been the chair for seven years in that committee. Um, but uh, the question that he proposed was, was more of a statement that he was concerned about um, eliminating design review committee um, and losing that sort of oversight. Um, in, in what he says in his quote in the proposed historic proposed historic zones, but um, the design review district is a um, it's a broad swath of the town in three general locations, so it's not a very specific area. Um, you know the the issue is that it, there's houses that are 1950s ranches in there, you know, along with, um, you know, uh, 1800s capes, you know, historic assets. So, um, you know, how do you um, how do you apply an ordinance to that kind of broad spectrum of of um, you know your housing stock? Um, so, um, it's been a the the committee's review has been very general um, for the most part. And so it's a subjective review um, based on a case-to-case -case basis. Um, but none of the, um, you know, there's a historic, uh, historic committee representative, that's you know, Newcastle Historic Committee representative. But um, aside from being a member of the historic committee, Nobody's really um, charged with being a preservationist or an expert in preservation or historic preservation. So um, if, if anybody's familiar with the process of going through a design review committee, it's more of a process of uh, somebody presenting a design, um, reviewing it um, based on what the opinions are at that time for uh, up to six members, including alternates. Most of the time we have four or five members attending the, the meetings. Um, so it's a, it's a subjective review. It can go um, anywhere from being a review of um, whether grills should be in the windows or not, to where the house should be on the lot, to where, um, you know, the color of your door 
the color of your shingles. Um, so it's 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 not very uh, it's not very pointed. There's not a lot of language in the design review ordinance to um, really give teeth to a to a pointed review. So back to what Rob was talking about with a preservation um, some kind of preservation ordinance. Um, I think the historic zones that we've we've got proposed in this new zoning map are very um, you know they're specific they're they're property line based so um, they're they're um, concentrated areas on Glidden Street uh, in the mills and in, um, in the Sheepscot Village so I think they're appropriately defined as places where. Uh, Predominantly, we have historic structures. Um, so taking that um, as sort of the, the base work for um, developing something a little bit more historic preservation minded, um, I think it's a, it's a good step forward. So, um, so I'll just leave it at that. Correct me, guys, who knows better than I do, but the, the new code really spells out what can be done exactly in, in the histor historical districts or what's now design review. Correct? So, so it's, laid yeah. out, it's laid out very well, and the CEO has the authority to just approve and versus going to his design review committee, getting the options of seven to, or five different people, and they're they're spun out opinions of what the code says, where this one is be laid out. It says exactly what you can and cannot do. And then the CEO is the final sign off on it. So it makes the process a lot easier. And, you know, I think we're gonna see major improvements in those, in those areas of town. So. There was, okay. there was uh, Brian, there was one more bullet. I talked about why now, why does it need to be done now? Is anyone, is there any response to that, that last bullet? Um, we, we could keep pushing this off. No, hang on, Joel. We, we could keep pushing it off, um, keep kicking this can down the road and, and just never get it done and watch this town continue to stay stagnant. You know, and not grow and, you know, and not do what our residents have asked. You know, we've, we've talked to a lot of people over the six years been working on this and Rob's been doing it for like 10, starting with the old land use ordinance. You know, so, Dean. you know, huh? 15. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, why, why wouldn't we do this now? It's, I think this is the right time to do it. 2020 has been a hell of a ride. And you know, Newcastle needs to bounce back out of this. And this, in my opinion, this code is going to help us do that. It's, it's going to give our residents things that they want to be able to do that today they cannot. So, I don't know. I would like to know why people just keep thinking we need to wait. What, what's the gain of waiting? Go ahead, Joel. I would just say, ask any builder if they think that the uh, the process should be slowed down or made so that the code enforcement officer can uh, can approve projects. Um, I have a couple projects right now. They're going to have to wait till the fall because I can't, I can't get, uh, approval in other towns, um, to do them. So luckily I have other projects to do. I can keep everyone employed, but that's not always the case. So we're dealing with people's jobs. We're dealing with people's projects. We're dealing with people's property and, um, anything we can do to protect and expedite uh, should be done now because it's uh, there's there's real ramifications for waiting. Ben. So um, without getting, I guess, into too, too many numbers and details, um, I guess one of the responses to the, the question is that as a as a former selectman who um, has done plenty of budgets for the town, and uh, keeps a close eye on things like mill rate and taxable value and things like that. Um, I've run the numbers and um, I've graphed them out and I've got all kinds of charts and trends and things like that. And the, um, no planning effort is a two-part answer, really. Um, no planning effort is an immediate fix. 
Um, we won't enact a new code or any ordinance change and see any kind of immediate financial benefit. Um, it's always a long, long game. It's a long-term planning strategy. And, um, but if you look into the past at where we've been uh, and extrapolate from where we've been to where we're going, if we don't change something, um, the outlook isn't great uh, financially uh, for the town, for taxes. And so I think that that was one of the big reasons when we looked at it and we started the process years ago, we had two things in mind. One was the land use ordinance as it exists is truly a mess and really does need to be replaced. Um, but there's also the aspect that we, we need to, for the health of our own town, uh, we need to enact a better um, vision through the comprehensive plan and enact those ideas into codes that benefit all of us um, into the future. And so I think, um, it, you know, I think that's definitely part of it. Waiting doesn't help. It just prolongs the problem. All right, so I think that hits all the bullet points on Mr. Stewart's. Uh, the second one was from uh, Nicholas Barr. And I know I read through this, he brings up the mobile home ordinance. Wait for John to bring it up in front of us here. He, he mentions the mobile home ordinance and some changes it could use, but we haven't adjusted the mobile home ordinance at all. That's an existing ordinance that's just being taken out of the existing code and making a standalone. So, so there's no changes to it. So I, I would think if he's got suggestions to it moving forward, that's probably something we'll attack down the road in the next couple of years. Um, and I, I, I would add that I that's that's a good example of things to put on our list. Um, the, 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 one of the things that, in addition to things that we we might identify now, like the historic preservation that we know, our future work that builds on the Corazon and Code, um, we've discussed many times the plan that the planning board will be charged with reviewing the ordinance um, once or twice a year and proposing changes. Um, uh, or additions or, or uh, fixes um, on an ongoing basis. So it doesn't, so this, the ordinance doesn't become stale. Um, so things like this are, are a perfect example of things that we can task the planning board with um, reviewing and proposing changes. So we will be, this will be an ongoing effort to keep everything up to date and, and uh, you know, uh, Clean it, clean up anything else that needs to be cleaned up. So this is a great, great point to put on that list. Right, I agree because he's he's got some good ideas in here for what we're missing in that in that code. But you know, like I said, that's the current code we haven't touched. So, other than that, anybody have anything else? Um, yeah, uh, just one piece that, that's brought up here in, in Mr. Barth's letter. Uh, the one thing he talks about is uh, the, the issue of big picture land use principles. And I, I'd urge anybody to, you know, with questions about what's the big picture, how does this code fit into that, to go on the town website. Um, I'm going to go there actually as I'm doing this. And if you go on the core zoning code page, if you click on core zoning code, it brings up this page. When you scroll to the bottom, the comprehensive plan, here's a link to the comprehensive plan. Anybody can open this up and it's a fairly readable, digestible document that you can go through and understand. Here we go, page two, big ideas of how to get it done. It's a photograph, but that's what this is about. That comprehensive plan is the piece where the big ideas and literally, we call them the big ideas um, that that people uh, want to understand. How does the co this this core code fit into what the bigger picture is? The comprehensive plan is the bigger picture, and so if folks are trying to understand that, why is it you know why are we talking about this versus that? This document that was approved by voters in June 2018, uh, as Rob had said, on a, on a on pretty large margin, 
this is the guiding document. And there are other things that need to go and, and be put on that list to change, to, to meet up with what we're discussing with, uh, um, you know, with, with the code. Sure. There, there, it's a constant state of evolution. And one thing that, you know, I want to somewhat say is this, um, ordinances and town documents are living, breathing documents. They constantly see revision and, and, and are under work. You know, it's like the city of Boston, right? Um, <laughs> every time you go, it's under construction. That's every document when it comes to a land use need in a community. And so the idea that either this document or, you know, that there's going to be a code that is pre presented before the voters in Newcastle that will be a finished product, uh, I think is probably an unrealistic expectation for the voters. I think what they need to look for is something that, that hits the needs, but understands that it needs constant revision and improvement to meet the needs of the town at that point in time. Uh, you know, there's, we talked about historic districts, you know, there's certainly the, the cultivation and sale um, and, and, you know, the marijuana issues that are currently, we've been addressed by, by citizens who are concerned about that issue um, on both sides of it. Uh, there's, you know, there's always going to be new issues. Uh, we were presented with issues on Airbnbs a few years ago. So I think what, what I, you know, my kind of, as a town, the town manager piece of this, in terms of my advice to the voters and to the residents is just to say, these documents are always going to be in a state of somewhat, um, you know, construction. We need, there, there's constant states of improvement. Uh, the current land use ordinance, as it sits, um, is in need of a, a great deal of work. And there's band-aids and there's ways you can get there. But that 274 page document has a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of issues that make it difficult from the town to defend and enforce its ordinance. That's a problem. That's a problem for the town of Newcastle. So, you know, if it's not this code, then there needs to be something, some sort of dramatic, dramatic effort undertaken by the town of Newcastle to prevent that and, and to prevent an issue where we can't enforce the ordinances on the books. You know, I've been in town for four and a half years almost working for the town. Um, this is a, this is a document that is imperfect, that needs improvement, but there is every, every document always will be. Um, there is no, there is no perfection. So I guess my question, you know, or, what needs to happen is as you move forward, as the residents go through this, go through that website, look at all those links, see what's on there, look at the work that's been undertaken. There's a new change log um, that's on that webpage so folks can go through and see the changes that uh, the town has, has undertaken since March. Um, thanks to Rob for putting in the effort to do that. Um, those, that's a very important piece so people can understand what, is, what has been addressed since March? That's a six month period of time and, and there's a lot of concern with what, what's happening, what's going on. You can follow it all there. If you have questions, members of the Board of Selectmen, I know we'll, have, we'll continue to meet with folks if there's an interest, if there's questions. Uh, you, know, you can call the town office, but, but I think an opportunity to sit down and, and talk with the decision makers is your best foot forward. And uh, you know, this, is, this has been a long effort and you know just looking at the faces again is kind of stepping back and not seeing pro or con the faces of the five selectmen the members of the zoning committee the members of the nlpc there's not a lot of energy left in those folks to go out and start new and start with a blank piece of paper um this is i think newcastle's best foot forward at the moment and so it's it's a challenge if you say if the town says no I'm not sure that there, what plan B exists, but I know that plan A that exists before you um, is, is really the best thing that I think uh, in terms of what you can put together, the five of you, the members of the zoning committee, the best um, that all those forces could put together possibly for voters to consider in November, 2020. Wanda. So I think one of the things that has me most excited about this new code is I live in rural North Newcastle, have lived here all my life, um, grew up on the dairy farm that used to be out here. And, you know, the thing that really gets me excited is we asked people back at the beginning of this, what makes rural rural? And they said, we don't know, but we know we know it when we see it. And I think part of what makes rural rural is the fields that we have out here. 
And the setbacks that we have right now in the current code really limits what you can do without taking. If you want to build in a field, you have to set back in a field and you're going to take that part of a field, which will never be field again. The new setbacks are a lot smaller, you know, for like existing buildings, if you want a primary building or a, an additional building. And my husband and I want to build something now. And instead of building it 30 feet into a field, we could build it 10 feet into the field. And really that footprint of that building is going to take up a lot less of that field. And that field will be field forever. Because once you take it away, as we know, you never get it back. And I think people who don't have bigger lots can do a lot more with it. If you have different setbacks, you know, you can build the garage that you want to build, or maybe a bigger garage that you would like to build, but you can't because you're limited. And, you know, I think people should be excited about that, that, you know, we've worked hard in all areas of Newcastle, but I think especially, you know, to me, you know, rural North Newcastle makes me excited because this is where I live. And there's things that, you know, I want to do, and I know there's things that other people want to do that still want to preserve what we have. And I think this new code will do that. Um, like, like John said, and Ben, it, you know, with, like we've all said from the get-go, is it perfect? No you know, there's a lot of work left to be done as we move forward, but it's a place to start. And it's a better place to start than what we have now. And I just hope that people don't get hung up on, you know, maybe what you, that you hear that you can't do. You know, please call us. If you haven't already voted, call any of us. You know, we're willing to talk to you and try to, try to explain what we've done and why we've done it. And, um, you know, and if, you know, and if we don't agree, then you know, we can look at it in the future, but what we have now definitely is not the best. And um, I'm, I'm working excited about um, this new code. And I hope, I hope other people really look at it for what it is and not just look at what they're hearing from different people who, um, and I'm not saying they're wrong. There, there are things that need to be changed, but, but it's not all of it. You know, we were tasked to take that old code and change it, not to put lipstick on it and bring it back. And we blew that thing up. It looks nothing like the code that people voted down, you know, a couple of years ago. It's totally, totally different. And I think if you look at it, you will be impressed and, um, and see all the hard work that, you know, the committee put into it. And um, I think each and every one of us are pretty proud of the work that we accomplished. If, if we're not, we sh certainly should be. And I hope the people of Newcastle see that and um, and respond to that. So, nicely said, Wanda. Nicely said. Anybody else have anything they want to add before we wrap this up? All right. Then at seven oh four, I guess we can officially close our public hearing. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And um, our next selectmen's meeting is next Monday. Correct. Seven o'clock. Still time to get absentee ballots if you want them. Uh, they have until what, what? What's the date, John, for the last time they get an absentee ballot? Uh, I believe the Thursday before the election. So I think that's the 27th, I think. Could be wrong on that. But that's for that, so that last week. You can. Yeah. Okay. And they can bring them back in on November 3rd to the, to the polling station the fire, at the fire station. Yep, they can do that. So, yep, they can put them in the they, drop box office. Or, right. The day, yeah, the day right. of the election, folks will need to bring the elect, bring their ballots too. But up until that point, use the drop box at the town office, and uh, and they can just drop them in there at any time, and day or night, uh, rain or shine. Just make sure you close the lid so the water doesn't go in the in the chute and get the all the ballots wet, please. Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, appreciate your everybody coming. And I'll see you guys Monday night. Nick, Ben, Kevin, thanks for coming. You're welcome. Okay. Have a good evening. Bye, Bye everyone. Hey, good night.